Um, thank you very much for that uh, introduction. And can I just start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon uh, which this parliament is built. Uh, thank you again very much for that uh, intro introduction, uh, Stephen. Can I say what a great privilege it is to be the Minister for Education. And in my role now of, for almost six years, um, no, almost five years, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, almost five years, the two best assets I've got as Minister, uh, one of them is in kindergarten and the other one is in year two. And talking about phonics, talking about literacy, talking about children starting school, the anxiety that parents have, our anxiety is shared by uh, the Minister for Education here in New South Wales. And they're great assets because the decisions that I make as, a, as the Minister for Education or that this, this parliament makes, the government makes, affect every single student in New South Wales schools, doesn't matter which school they go to. But when you see it, the impact it has on your own children, uh, it adds an extra element of importance to what is absolutely uh, a critical job. Uh, Kerry, I was pleased to see that um, a number of the things that you raised, uh, I, I was ticking off a few things in my head, thinking, oh, oh good, we've done that and we've done that, or maybe we need to look at that. So, you know, as all, as all ministers uh, I want to do, uh, to go across that, to go over that checklist. One of the things that we've really targeted here is in New South Wales is the issue of uh, quality teaching and, and what it is. We looked at the entire life cycle of the teacher from when they enter university, right through their practice, right through to what skills do they have when they retire that we can then use to mentor and support uh, teachers uh, who, who remain in the profession. The Great Teaching Inspired Learning Reforms, I think had 42 different recommendations. And Kerry, I've got to say, the one thing that we did look at was the 2005 report that I think Brendan Nelson had commissioned, particularly around this issue of the teaching of literacy. And we literally pulled out sections of that and have put them in that, uh, those Great Teaching Inspired Learning recommendations, particularly, as I say, around the teaching of phonics, about the requirement, the mandatory requirement that universities teach phonics when they are teaching students at university to make sure that when they come out, they have the tools necessary, all of the tools necessary, phonics plus the other ones. Uh, not every word can be decoded using phonics. All of the tools necessary uh, that they need to be able to teach children to read. So that's been a critical component uh, of the GTIL reforms. We've improved the way that we conduct practicum at, uh, at schools. We've engaged the universities, I think, in a way that the three sectors, the three schooling sectors have never been engaged previously with schools around quality, quality practicum, making sure that when teachers go to schools and do that practicum, that they get a quality experience, find out what it actually means to be a teacher on the front line, or indeed to find out that teaching is not the career for them. The sooner they learn, they find that out, the better. So much closer engagement between schools and universities, the exchange even between lecturers and schools and school teachers and universities. Uh, beginning teachers, uh, certainly in public schools, we put some of the Gonski resources towards uh, release time for beginning teachers so that when they come out, like everybody, I'm a trained lawyer. When I graduated from university, I didn't know the first thing about being a solicitor. It was very much on the job training. But we know that in teaching, often it happens that teachers walk into a classroom and essentially thrown in the deep end. We've done some of those things about giving them some of that time, releasing some of those mentors, those experienced teachers, to give them that support and additional training. Uh, we've substantially increased the profession, professional development resource available to teachers in public schools by 50%. Uh, I know non-government schools uh, have done very similar things. Uh, we've introduced standards-based pay in New South Wales public schools. Again, making sure that salary progressions are not simply achieved or earned by time spent in the profession, but indeed by meeting standards, by meeting hard, hard barriers that you need to achieve, meet standards, meet the ATSL standards in order to move up uh, the, the salary scale for teachers. And uh, the quality teaching supported students funds that are rolling out over the next couple of years. Again, giving experienced teachers 
that uh, that excellent teacher, Steve, in a, in a school who's got the experience, who's got the knowledge, the, the teacher who knows how to impart uh, their skills on other teacher, teachers, giving them the time out to do the collaboration. Again, Kerry, some of the things that I was ticking off in my mind, the collaboration, the importance of collaboration between teachers to make sure that we don't have that variability that Steve talked about in the, in, within schools. And every, ter every, ter every parent in a school knows which teachers are the teachers you want your kids to have and which teachers they don't want them to have. We don't want it to be a lottery at schools anymore. We want every teacher, and I know this in the, in the school my kids go to, I want to know that every teacher that they have is as good as every other teacher. And by doing that, the collaboration, making sure that in my son's class there is that fantastic teacher who'll spend, even if it's a couple of days a year, sitting up the back of that class, observing that teacher, making sure that they are absolutely delivering for that student. So that's that life cycle uh, series of reforms around what we're doing for, for teachers. Because to be able to teach phonics, to teach literacy, you need to have all of those capabilities as a teacher and most importantly to feel supported by the school, by the system, by the principal, uh, but also that cultural change within schools that we need to see as well. Moving away from I've graduated, I go in a class, I shut the door for the next 40 years. The second thing, and I think probably the most successful thing that we've engaged in here in New South Wales over the last five years is um, the Literacy and Numeracy Action Plan, as it's known statewide, it's cross-sectoral. In public schools, it's uh, called Early Action for Success, where we've introduced that tiered intervention in K-2, uh, particularly around literacy and numeracy. So using the literacy and numeracy continuum, uh, explicit teaching, the, the tiered interventions, uh, and I'll get to one of those uh, potential interventions in a moment, uh, but also, and, and just as importantly, the use of data by teachers and teaching teachers how to use data effectively to guide their students uh, through particularly kindergarten to year two. Now, I was at Curran Public School today out in uh, Glenfield with a couple of other principals and a couple of instructional leaders from Tregear Public School as well. And they're seeing terrific results in some of the most challenging schools, some of those schools where uh, certainly more than 50% of students were not meeting those minimum uh, literacy and numeracy benchmarks, uh, certainly by, the, uh, by year two. Uh, some of those results are quite outstanding uh, in some of those elements where 100% of students uh, were not meeting those minimum benchmarks. They've got those numbers down to 12 and 18%. So we're seeing some fantastic results picking up a number of those things that Kerry uh, had, had mentioned. Uh, of course, funding matters. Uh, funding, funding matters, the dollars matter, but again, equally, and I certainly agree, it depends where you put those resources and using the evidence to direct those resources is absolutely critical. And I'm pleased to say, again, uh, the mental tick off in New South Wales over the last five years, those reforms are backed by a million dollars that we have set aside specifically for evaluations uh, of what we do. So um, great teaching inspired learning, uh, various other reforms that we've introduced here, rural and remote and the like. But we also have the Centre for Educational Statistics and Evaluation that does uh, uh, evaluations of other programs, including most recently, as most would know, an evaluation of reading recovery, which was not particularly glowing of reading recovery. Now, again, uh, we are into this uh, vexed war uh, that Steve talked about. Uh, <laughs> um, what, what to do with the, uh, the CESI report is something that is uh, exercising my mind, ex exercising the mind of the Secretary here in New South Wales. It is resource, it is, uh, they are dollars that we currently, uh, much of it is centrally allocated from the Department of Education. Uh, and there are questions about, the questions that we need to resolve uh, as, as, uh, as the education minister and the department about how we allocate uh, those resources. The Catholic Education um, Commission have a different view. Uh, when that report came out, they came out with certainly a different view about, uh, about reading recovery. And again, Steve, this is always the problem with wars. The truth is the first casualty, <laughs> right? So we, we all know that there are multiple, there are multiple views. So there will be some decisions that need to be made by New South Wales, but all of those decisions are informed by 
the work of organisations like the Center, the, the Center for Independent Studies, uh, the Five from Five, uh, and the other research papers that have been put together. Listening to Kerry's presentation, it also reminded me of one other thing we've we've not done over the last five years, and that's done is is um, undertaken more research. What we've actually done, and a lot of the work we've asked CeCe to do to back up our reforms, is actually have a look at the, the research that is already there. I mean, the age of some of this research, and I don't think much has changed. We could go in a, go through a period of another year or another couple of years of, this, of doing the same research again. What CeCe has done to back up our, our reforms is had a look at the research that's already been done, both here in Australia, in, internationally, international practice, interstate practice, to make sure that what we're doing is right and then evaluating what we do to make sure that if it needs to be tweaked, uh, it can be tweaked. So um, I'd like to think we've done um, a lot here in New South Wales, uh, very much uh, focused on, particularly in, in literacy, on the use of phonics. Anyone who says it's not necessary uh, needs to come and talk to me. Uh, and I talk to my kids about um, air, 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 and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's fascinating. It's, it's so, so wonderful having small children being the Minister for Education as well because it is education reform uh, brought to you live uh, every afternoon at four o'clock on those days when I happen to be home or first thing in the morning uh, when I ask my, my five-year-old, what did you learn at school today? But well, after he says, I didn't learn anything, then we talk, so, you know, which letter did you learn today? And it's, it's, absolutely fan, it's absolutely fantastic. And anybody who says that phonics is not a necessary tool, not the only tool, but not a necessary tool, uh, is kidding themselves. So in that sense, Steve, the war is over here in New South Wales. Uh, and again, I just want to thank uh, the work um, of Jennifer and, uh, and the Centre uh, and the work that other people in this room do to support education in New South Wales, supporting not, obviously not just my children, but uh, uh, all of the children uh, here in New South Wales. It is the most important area of public policy uh, and it needs to be informed by the right ev evidence. Thank you very much. <laughs>